Security of SHA-1 is an important issue. So if you think about collision resistance, since the message digest length is 160 bits, the birthday paradox means that the collision, uh, to find the collision, you need to perform around 2 to the 80 uh, SHA-1 operations to get a collision. So uh, years ago, Wang uh, obtained a theoretical attack that would require 2 to the 63 SHA-1 operations. But the thing is that uh, nobody was able to uh, practically perform this attack because uh, although maybe 2 to the 63 is not that uh, hard nowadays, you can perform that many uh, SHA-1 operations, but you also need to keep the hash values in the memory and you know sort them and uh, check if there's a collision and so on. So for a very long time, uh, it was a wonder if anybody could find a SHA-1 collision. But uh, SHA-0 collisions can be found with a very small number of operations, which can be done in a few seconds using a GPU, maybe in less than a second. So uh, browsers uh, of uh, many companies actually stopped accepting SHA-1 SSL certificates by 2017. So maybe you, you remember after the you know uh, first of January in 2018, when you visited some web pages, you would uh, receive some uh, warnings from your browser. Uh, this was because of this uh, transition. They stopped uh, accepting SHA-1 certificates. So uh, although in theory one produced collision attacks. It took uh, a lot of years for uh, cryptographers to find a, a concrete example. In uh, 2015, uh, when I was actually start, I started teaching this course before, so this slide wasn't in a, my earlier uh, courses. So uh, a free start collision example was found. So we said free start because as you can see, the IVs are different in two, these two cases. But for instance, if you are going to use a standard like NIST, then the, you, don't, you wouldn't change the IV. But in this case, the attacker modifies the IV in order to find the collision in a faster way. And it was shown that uh, this message block, a uh, single message block with this IV, and this message below with this IV provides the same uh, SHA-1 output. So this was found by Mark Stevens, Pierre Cartman, and Thomas Pairing using uh, 64 NVIDIA GTX GPUs. And uh, they performed around two to the 57 SHA-1 evaluations. So a free start collision breaks the inner layer of SHA-1. It does not directly translate into a collision on the full SHA-1 because the attacker is not able to choose the initial internal state, so the IV. But the important thing uh, here the team was trying to show is that uh, they found this attack with this many operations. So they said that if they have more GPUs and more time, they can find a collision to the full SHA-1. So their claim was uh, actually correct because two years later, they teamed up with Google because Google had a lot of GPUs. So they said that uh, they can use their GPUs. We don't know the exact number. Google never provided how many GPUs were used and how long it took. But uh, in this case, uh, they obtained a, a SHA-1 collision. But this time it is not a single block message, but two blocks. So these two blocks, and these two blocks, the changes are given. I'm just, I took the picture from the original paper. So as you can see, the output hash value are the same in this case. So this was a big open problem. And people wondered if we could find uh, SHA-1 collisions anytime soon. And uh, the team showed that it was possible and they found the collision in 2017. So this is important because uh, although you might think that a collision wouldn't cause much of a problem, uh, actually a similar thing can happen that happened in the MD5. So we strongly recommend everybody to stop using SHA-1 and move on to SHA-2 or SHA-3. 
So before moving to SHA-2, let's talk about RIPE-MD. Uh, it has many versions, but uh, 160 version is uh, the one that you can replace SHA-1 with. So depending on the message digest length, you can have different RIPE-MD uh, hash functions. So it was developed by Dobertin, Bosselaz, and Prenad in 1996. This is important because uh, as you have seen SHA-1 and as you, we are going to see SHA-2 was developed by NSA, but RIPE-MD was developed by uh, academicians. So currently a hash function that is not broken and a hash output of size 160 bits uh, that's still secure and designed by academicians is the RIPE-MD 160. So for some reason, if you don't want to use an algorithm by, uh, designed by NSA and you want a small hash output, then you can use RIPE-MD. So this picture is again very similar. So it is again Merkle Damgaard construction and the picture is for 160 version. So it looks very similar to SHA-1. The rotation numbers are different and so, but the number of runs is the same. So currently nobody found a better attack than birthday paradox. So RIPE-MD160 is the only remaining 160-bit digest size hash function that has not been broken yet, to the best of our knowledge. So it was developed in the open academic community in contrast to the NSA design SHA-1 and SHA-2. So let's move on to SHA-2. So until RIPE-MD, we talk about hash functions that were broken. And with RIPE-MD and SHA-2 and SHA-3, we will show uh, hash functions that are not broken yet. So as you can see, uh, the picture is somewhat bigger now because uh, the message digest length is increased. So we have more words here. And uh, depending on the size of the output, the block size also changes, either 512 or 1024 bits. And depending on the message digest length, the number of runs are uh, is either 64 or 80. So this was developed by NSA in 2001. And the picture is somewhat a little bit complicated than the previous one. Now we have more functions like uh, sigma function here, majority function here, and sigma zero here, and so on. So these functions are uh, similar to the uh, key and the majority function looks similar to the MD5 functions, uh, sigma zero and sigma one are just uh, XOR of uh, rotated versions of the verse to itself. So uh, as far as I know, the currently the best attack is just a pseudo collusion attack against the six, uh, 46 runs, which actually has 64 runs. So we are not even close breaking to it. And the a 2011 attack breaks premise resistance for 57 out of 80 runs of SHA 512 and 52 out of 64 runs for SHA 256. Of course, I'm saying break, but it is not a practical attack. You're just breaking theoretically. So to the best of our knowledge, uh, SHA 2 is very secure and currently we are not even close to breaking it. But the problem is that as you can see, this picture is just a little bit modified version of the previous ones. So since MD4, what we are doing is we are adding more runs, we are adding more words and adding a few more operations and uh, hoping that it will be secure and cryptographers won't be able to break it. But we were uh, wrong many times until SHA-1. So question was that uh, since SHA-2 is the only remaining non-broken algorithm, uh, publicly known, uh, NIST thought that maybe we should uh, find another hash function. Because if SHA-2 was broken, um, all of the public key algorithms like digital signatures and so on would be not be secure. So NIST wanted to have a plan B. Uh, so they designed a competition, which was known as SHA-3 competition. So let me summarize why this uh, competition 
was designed. Since MD4 and MD5 SHA1 are broken, only SHA2 remained, but it was similar to previous design, so it was just a Merkle Damgard with uh, similar operations. So NIST announced the hash competition, and this competition was held between 2007 and 2012. And uh, it received 64 submissions. Uh, four of them were uh, from Turkish designers. Of course, two of them were abroad at the time. Not all of them sent from Turkey. Unlike previous competitions, NIST allowed designers to tweak their algorithms after round two. This was something new. And uh, you can find almost every information about this uh, competition in SHA3 Zoo uh, from this web page. And this, these are some screenshots from that web page. This uh, actually shows the uh, algorithms that were eliminated in the round one. So here are the names of the algorithms, principal this submitter, and uh, their, the status is that they are eliminated in round one. And these are the attacks that were found. So a red means that it was, I think, practical and so on. So some of the algorithms are broken in round one, as you can see. As you can see, some of the algorithms has no known attack to them, but uh, this is not, uh, in order to be eliminated, uh, the, the only reason is not having an um, attack, because if it is, for instance, very slow, uh, like in the case of MD6, uh, it was uh, hard for them to move on to round two, and this is what happened. So these are the algorithms that were eliminated in round one. And in round two, these are the algorithms. So Hamsi was the only Turkish uh, algorithm that made it to round two. And uh, Hamsi, as you may know, is a fish that is very common in Black Sea. So it is small and fast. So this was the uh, idea behind the name. But uh, it wasn't as fast as it's uh, compared to the other competitors. So this is why uh, it didn't make to the round three. But important thing is that so since these are algorithms that are eliminated, you might think that nobody was nobody is using them. But the thing is, uh, many cryptocurrencies are now using uh, are trying to make mining operation harder. So one idea was to um, uh, prevent uh, ASICs uh, to be designed for those hash functions. One idea was to use more than one hash function. For instance, X11 algorithm uh, uses 11 different hash functions. And those, uh, as there are similar versions like X, X15, X16. So when you say X16, this means that you are using 16 different hash functions. And these hash functions are actually uh, contains all or most of these uh, algorithms that are eliminated in round two. So if you are mining for an alternative currency that uses a mining algorithm like X11 or X15, uh, most probably you are using these algorithms. So there were five finalists. Of course, one of them won, won the competition and four of them were eliminated. These were the eliminated ones and the winner was Ketchak. So Ketchak, uh, once uh, won the competition, got the name of SHA-3. So it was designed by Guido Bertoni, John Damon, uh, Michelle Peters, and Gilles Van Aft. So now, as you can see, the block size is really big. This is mainly because it is a sponge construction. We have a huge internal state. We will it will absorb the message, and then we will squeeze it and produce the output. So medial message digest length is the same as SHA-2. This, is, this was a NIST uh, requirement because if we wanted to replace at some point SHA-2 with SHA-3, the, there would be same algorithms with the same, sorry, different algorithms with the same message digest length. So instead of using SHA-2 with 256, we would move on to SHA-3 with 256 bit output. Number of runs again depends on the message digest length. But the difference is that it is a sponge construction. So uh, algorithm is somewhat uh, complicated because uh, I show you that this is a main picture for sponge constructions uh, for hash functions. So you have R bits and C bits, you have the internal state, you perform these operations. 
but uh, since the internal state of uh, SHA-3 is really huge, they show it in a three-dimensional picture. So let's look at it. So we are very familiar with representing a yes block cipher with four by four columns. Now we have actually three-dimensional uh, picture and these actually, as far as I know, all of them are uh, bytes perhaps. Actually, it depends on the message digest length. So you have rows, you have slice, and you have lanes and you have columns. So you have many operations in the F function that uh, perform operations on different parts of the uh, internal state. So these colors are uh, same in the following uh, picture. So think about each row, you have five boxes like here. So you perform an S box operation here, it is known as catch a key function. And uh, you also have catch a pi function. So in this case, you take the whole slice and perform some uh, shift or uh, rotation operations like this. You also have catch a row function. This time, uh, instead of uh, a slice, you work on lanes. And finally, you have a catch a theta function and it operates on these values. So uh, although the picture, even the picture looks complicated, implementing it actually is not an easy task. Uh, so this is why uh, remember the pictures I show you for SHA-1, SHA-2, or MD-5. Just looking at a single picture, we could see the whole round and understand what is going on, and we could easily go and implement it ourselves. But uh, SHA-3 is not that easy. So I don't know if people uh, are implementing their own implementations or just using the reference implementation. 